I told them there are bigger robberies than property robbery. Huh? <laughs> Satan did not steal property from Adam. He stole prosperity. No. He didn't take any fruit from the garden. He just commoted what made Adam Adam. By the time he finished with Adam, Adam was standing stark naked. His glory had gone. Fear had entered him. And then God said to him, the art has rebelled against you. Toiling has started. The man that was full of glory is a rejected man. Not you. I said not you. Whatever came to steal your clothes, I give you back your clothes. Physical robbery is about taking what you have. Spiritual robbery is about taking who you are. They just damage you. Not you. Samson was there. He didn't know when they robbed him of Samson. The carcass was still standing there talking. The real Samson has come out there. You are not hearing me. When they say Samson, the Philistines come up, he got up, he shook himself. <laughs> it was Samson they saw. Samson has left. He wished not that the Lord had departed from him. Anybody here that something that makes you, you have moved. I came here by the mantle of God and I give it back to you. Receive it back now. Receive your glory back. Receive your life back. When your amen lies, take your portion. Some robberies are not about what is taken from you. It's what is hindered from getting to you. You are there thinking you're a millionaire. But God wanted you to be a billionaire. You are thinking you built a house. God wanted you to build an estate. You are thinking you got a breakthrough. God wanted you to go far. Where you are there, you are celebrating what God has, or what you think God has done. And God is wishing you could see where he was taking you to. He said, he showed me Joshua. He was standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan was standing by his right hand resisting him. Are you with me? What was coming to Joshua couldn't come. Because, you see, some of you don't know, long time ago your prayer was answered. But the resistance has kept it until now. The angel said to Daniel, he said, 21 days ago your prayer was answered. I have been on a journey, not because heaven is that far, but because a prince of darkness resisted me. I stretch my hand over you. Whatever was coming to you that evil resisted, as you are hearing me now, let the resistance break. God said to Elijah, He said, Anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, anoint Jehu. Uh, to be king over Israel. Anoint Elisha to be prophet in your place. Hazel took the anointing, took over the throne. Elisha cut the mountain mantle and uh, resumed as a prophet with him. But a man called Jehu was forgotten. One year passed, two years, three years, nine years. Jehu is still in the bush, not knowing that there's a royalty speaking over him. There may be somebody here now who is in a dark place not knowing that what God packed if they show you your picture in eternity you will be shocked at who you are seeing but I lift my hand over you whatever is hindering your destiny delaying your wedding delaying your millionaire capacity delaying your breakthrough delaying your rising I come as God's servant I break the delay I break the delay I break the delay I break the delay I break the delay. Somebody shall break. Tonight, today is your day. Say amen if you are one of us. I say to them, the man who doesn't know what is what is missing has been robbed twice. And many of us don't know what we are missing. 
We're celebrating smallness, thinking we have arrived. No knowing that big things are passed us by. But today is your day. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And I said to them that some satanic robberies are just destiny exchanges. They took what was yours and gave you what is theirs. You are moving up and down thinking there's something in you. Not knowing what is in you is not the real one. You didn't hear me. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. I'm sure many of you here behave like me. Maybe in your house, you have uh, one uh, remote control you don't use often. I have one you normally use often. And the one you use often, normally the battery goes bad. And instead of going to buy a new battery, you collect the one you don't use often. Remove the... Your face is waking up. You, you, you are one of the criminals. <laughs> are you hearing me? You put it there. And <laughs> that's what the devil does with some people. You just collect from here, socket here, and all of that. And you're just there. You know, the woman in the Bible came to Solomon. He said, God, Solo, please listen. This baby no be my own. He said, I woke up in the night. I turned, I saw the baby. I thought it's my baby. So long. In critical examination. As I looked at the baby well. I found that somebody took my own and gave me this dead thing. I know I don't have a dead destiny. I don't have a dead brain. My favor didn't die. My destiny didn't die. This thing here no be me. I better pass this one. Who took my own? Anybody here that they took your own? Anybody here, an uncle exchanged with your own? An auntie exchanged and gave to his son? And somebody did make some magic and took something? I come on the authority of Jesus. I command the exchange be reversed. I command the exchange be reversed. In your business, let it be reversed. In your career, let it be reversed. In your marriage, let it be reversed. Any dead thing you are carrying, I recover your living thing. Hey, and hey. I take back whoever had it. Hey, Someone hey. shall fire. fire. Don't allow the enemy mess you up. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. No, this thing is not your own. And one good thing about the devil's activity is when you catch him, he returns sevenfold. Proverbs 6 30 says, Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. But if he be caught, if he is found, and brothers and sisters, we have caught the thief. Have you caught him? Yeah. Lift your hand, I declare over you. Sevenfold restoration. Yeah. If your amen came, your portion is delivered. Yeah. In the first service, I spoke to them on it is well and they shall be well. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. In the second service, I spoke to them on there is hope for the tree. And in this service, I'm talking to you on pursue, overtake, recover all. I see everything recovered. When you are amen, last, take your portion. In first Samuel chapter 30, from us one. You see the story of David by the, with the Malachites. For time's sake, I'm going to lead you to read it at home. David went to a battle. Left his wife and children and the wives of his soldiers in the camp with a few guys. Before they came back, the Malachites have come behind them, attacked Ziklags where they can collected their wives and children and went away with them. Took everything in the end. They didn't kill anybody. They just left with everything. David came back. And when David arrived, the camp was raised with fire. They looked everywhere. They couldn't find their wives. They thought they ran into the bush. They checked everywhere. They were not in the bush. And they found out they had been kidnapped. Taken by the enemy. And they are sure the enemy is not returning them. David wept. The Bible said the men within wept until they have no strength to weep. Brothers and sisters, when you see men weep, something happened. 
Come on, am I talking to somebody here? Something deep touched them. They wept. In the midst of the weeping, some of them got angry and said, it's your decision that caused us this problem. And they took stones to kill David. But God intervened and they couldn't kill him. And the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And he asked his man of God, Abiata. He said, Abiata, he said, yeah. he said, can we inquire from God? They brought out the effort. They spoke to God. Lord, do we pursue this? Is this a lost cause? Is there a chance of restoration? Is there a chance of recovery? If we go after this, can we recover? If not, let us settle here now. I'm start moving and start looking for new wives and children. And God says, pursue. Not only will you pursue, but you will overtake them and you will recover all. There's somebody here who lost something. In the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, you will pursue. You will overtake. You will recover all. If you are amen, Lance, take your portion. And the Bible said, David and the people with him began to pursue. Some of the men were too tired, they couldn't go with David, but a few left with him. On the way, they found this Egyptian boy, sick and stranded on the way. They asked him, who are you? He said, he's an Egyptian. But his master, he went with the master for a, a military campaign. And then they burnt Ziklag with fire. That's when David knew, oh, these are the people that came to attack our camp. He says, that's what he said, yes. He said, I'm the person you burnt his camp. The boy began to beg, don't kill me. I was sick and my master abandoned me here and left. You know, there are people that are wicked though. Abandoned him to, to die in the bush and left. And he said, no problem. He said, can you take me to your master? And the boy said, I know where he comes. I'm his peer. I'll take you there. Where he hides, I can take you there. Just promise me one thing that you won't kill me. David says, is he about killing? He said, no, if I give him food to eat well. <laughs> you are not hearing him. Give him food. Prepare him well. They got him okay. The boy was healthy. He took them to the camp. When they got there, these are Malachites because they took so much from David and his people. They were so excited. They were having a party that night. They were drinking until they were drunk. You know, early satisfaction is bad. David attacked them in the night. And the Bible says, and David recovered all. I want to lift your hand. Somebody hearing me here today. I want you to know, by this you know God sent me to you. Yeah. Within 40 days you recover. Yeah. Jobs will be recovered. Yeah. Relationship recovered. Yeah. Careers recovered. Yeah. Destiny is recovered. Amen. When you hear, when I hear your amen, you take your portion. Amen. You see, please listen to me. I will try my best not to over shoot this service. But you see, there are times when life gives a man uppercut. No, you didn't hear me. Have you been watching boxing before? Eh? And you see a heavyweight champion. Huh? Yes, that man no be small man. The thing where go bring him down no be small thing. But then suddenly, in the midst of boxing, he makes a mistake and exposes here. And somebody with a left hook gives an uppercut. <laughs> you see that heavyweight champion. Uh -huh. Even when he lands to get up, they have to help him again. Why something hit him? And brothers and sisters, whether you are gay or not, there are times something hits you. No, you are not hearing. Even men of God, there are times life gives them uppercut. You are not with me. <laughs> if you have my voice, say yes. Many of you are not, uh, don't drive. You see, if you drive, you are a driver for a long time. You know that there are different kinds of gallops. There are some gallop you enter, car didn't notice. There are some gallop you enter, it's your stomach they notice, boom, and then something notice. But there are some gallop you enter, chassis shift. 
No, you are not hearing my voice. There are some of you that enter that kind of gallop. But that's why I'm here today. I command right now. Let there be a sheep back in the name of Jesus. Life gave David an upper court. And many times we ask, why does good, bad things happen to good people? That, that's one question that confuses church members. They say, but this guy has been good. He's praying, he's fasting, he's praying. Listen, listen, listen. You don't need to look far. The only reason bad things happen to good people is that the earth is a fallen place. The earth is a fallen place. No perfection on this earth. The whole world lies in wickedness. It's a zone of darkness. And the moment you are on this earth, evil will keep looking for you. The Bible said there's somebody called the adversary. He goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if your door is open by any chance, I stretch my hand. You will never be a victim. You will never be a victim. Please let me explain this very carefully. That you suffered something is not an indictment on your relationship with God. That something bad happened to you doesn't mean that your relationship with God is bad. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that you sinned. It doesn't mean you missed out something. It simply means there's a living devil out there. A man that left his house going to work. And on the way to work, an armed robber confronted him on the car and snatched his car. Explain to me where he missed God. Where he missed life. Where he missed destiny. No, you're not hearing me. Going to work is not a sin. Huh? That man could have paid his tithe on Sunday. Please talk to me here. And he may not be the one they're looking for. They're just standing here looking for anybody. And then he walk out enter the time. The world is... Are they still hearing me? The world is a fallen place. You plan and plan and plan and plan. See, see what Christians are suffering in Nigeria. A man is in his house in Benue. And some terrible people just come in. Pian, 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 they're killing people. What do they want? They want to drive you out so they can have grazing land. Come and talk to me. How do you explain that? The world is a fallen place. Evil is everywhere. While you are sitting down, if you are hearing my voice, say yes. yes. You see, I'm a pastor and I counsel. If I share with you one tenth of what I see in counseling, when a human being brings out a hand to shake you, you're wrong. You're not hearing. When a man brings out his hands to shake you, you're wrong. You'll be sitting down with somebody is talking to you, and he walks into your office and says, Pastor, I've killed somebody before. The person is looking very decent, very handsome, very intelligent, talking good grammar, has a master's degree or first degree. He said, I don't keep a person before. Pastor, pray for me. I, I joined that court. Namibia. Namibia Kapo. He's now, bro, talking in tongue. But when you see him so gentle, you don't know where he started from. No, you're not hearing me here. You are talking to a sister. Sister is looking very nice, very gentle, very quiet. When you meet her like this, she's so mellow. She said, Pastor, lay hands on me. Uh, my university, na GRA standing, na him pay for it. The way you're looking at me. Is anybody hearing me? You, you, people, you don't know everybody. You see a lot of things. Am I wasting my time with somebody? That's how life is. Life will give you an upper court. Once in a while, they knock you down. But they can't knock you out. And the beautiful thing is that you can rise. I'm sure you watch boxing. 
Huh? If you don't watch, watch one time. You see people who are they knock you down. Bram. Only a foolish boxer gets up immediately. Nah. If they hit you, bam. When you fall, calm down. You have 10 counts. No, you are not hearing me. <laughs> if you get up, they hit you again. But if you stay down there, they count one, they check your face. You say, I stay there. Keep counting. <laughs> and then you get up by the ninth one. By then, you have at least rested for two minutes. While you are there, they've told the man, go to your side. He has gone to his side. Then you can come up. <laughs> you are ready to enter the... Am I talking to somebody? That's how to deal with life. When life gives you an uppercut, you can still recover. Yes. Lift your hand and say, I will recover. Shout it rather, I will recover. The proof of a warrior is not strength. It is resilience. The proof of a warrior is the ability to bounce back from defeat. To bounce back from setback. Winston Churchill says that courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. So you went through this, you went through that, you went through that. And you look at yourself and say, I'm still here. I'm not dead, Satan, I'm your worst nightmare. I am the man you couldn't bring down. Am I talking to somebody here today? They knocked David down. But they didn't knock him out. And brothers and sisters, let me say something again to you about life. You know, are you here? Nothing reveals loyalty in this earth like when you are down. You are not, if you have my brother, say yes. Nothing reveals loyalty like when you are down. You see all these governors now that everybody is shouting your excellency. May 27, 9 is coming. After May 29. <laughs> so boy, not talk to me like that. He's gone for excellency to a boy. No, you are not hearing me. Can't talk to me like that. He's shouting and looking at you because all these eight years he has been waiting to tell you something. <laughs> are you still with me? When David was knocked down. The Bible said the man he trusted. The man he thought were going to stand with him. Took up stones to stone him. They lost something. But he also lost. But when people are in pain. They forget that you lost. They transfer aggression together with their pain. You are not hearing me here. You will never know loyalty until something is bad. A woman will be nice to the husband until he loses she, the job. And then give it three months, he can't pay rent. He can't do anything. And then the woman will look at the husband. And when she opens the mouth, you wonder whether she ever respected the man. This is what I'm saying. Does it happen? Yes, huh? Yes, this man married a beautiful young girl. And he's excited to call her his wife. And they keep moving on. Until one year passed and two years passed and no baby has come. That's when you notice whether loyalty is there or not. Come on, talk to me. That's when you notice whether loyalty is there or not. I want you to please understand that people are going to walk away. When they walk away, walk on. Am I talking to somebody here today? Never allow the rejection of men to transfer to self-rejection. They reject you, accept yourself. They walk away, walk on. One day, they're going to look at you and say, we knew he will succeed. Lift up your hand, I say you will succeed. I say you will succeed. I say you will succeed. Please listen to me. The greatest thing you can do to yourself is to lose, the worst thing is to lose hope. Many young ladies are soured because a young man looked at them and said, this engagement is over. And for three years, all that is in their brain is this engagement is over. They lost their face, lost the enthusiasm for life. Every time they're in church, we say, uh, we're praying against witchcraft. He turns, turn the fire, you don't you? 
for me he not got better for him <laughs> that's not what we're praying about <laughs> leave you don't you alone am, am i talking to somebody here <laughs> let him go you are a good thing the man that walked away lost you you didn't lose him you were his key to another level watch out you will be the one one day he will call and say send me something am I talking to somebody here stop allowing yourself to walk in depression and sorrow and that I told you I didn't want to preach no but this service I sense something I sense God wants me to repair some things I never went through any preamble in the other service I just kept firing can you lift up your right hand? I speak over you right now. Whatever it is the enemy did in your life, I correct it. Yeah. Let me give you a few practices of survivors. Because they be survived it. You will survive it. Yeah. The first practice of survivors is they don't mourn forever. No survivor mourns for long. You mourn a little. You bury the dead. You move on. You didn't hear me. You mourn a little. You bury the dead. You move on. You mourn a little. You bury the dead. You move on. That's how survivors live. Stop telling me a story. How you were a great man going somewhere. And it's because fire bombed my one market seven years ago. That's why you are down. Mourn a little. Move on. The way they're looking at me. Uh, how my ministry crash is because an assistant pastor he, he betrayed me. Mourn a little. Wow. Do what? Wow. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, that relationship, I invested so much. In fact, I'm the one that helped him bring his transport to abroad. He got in there and blocked me. Mourn a little. Wow. Are they still hearing me? If you don't learn this, you will suffer a lot. The Bible said David cried, but after he cried, he strengthened himself in the Lord his God. He mourned a little. Secondly, survivors never lose faith in themselves. It is not being alone that destroys a man, it is being lonely. And lonely is not about being just you. Lonely is when no one is with you and you are not with you too. <laughs> you didn't hear me. You, you will, when you hear this, you will understand. I say lonely is when no one is with you and you are also not with you. Everybody can leave you, but if you are with you, you can't be lonely. You can be alone, but not lonely. Never let life mess you up. If you have my voice, say yes. The third thing survivors do is that they seek critical counsel. When David lost everything, he turned around. He said, Who is my priest? Who do I turn to? Abiata, come here. You are my father in the Lord. <laughs> Let's settle this on the altar. Tell me, what is the Lord saying? Bring the effort. Everyone here, look up here. I didn't assume fatherhood. I am a real father. For those of you here who know who your father is, I am. Those who don't know, look here now. See your papa. Are you, are, are you hearing me? No, 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 no. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. The Lord say, pursue, overtake. You will surely recover. You are asking whether there's a future. God said there's a future. 
you are asking whether greatness is still calling you god say greatness is still calling you are asking whether you still make it in life i came to tell you you will exceed your expectation so how do you know I am holding the effort I am scanning what God is saying I am looking into the mind of God concerning your life and I came to announce to somebody 2023 will not be a wasted year he said bring the effort he brought the effort he said what is God saying can we go he said we'll go touch your neighbor and say you are going Tell someone and say you are going. going. Tell a third person you are going. going. But it's not just receiving counsel or direction from God. You also receive information from man. David didn't just receive counsel from God. He got information from that young boy for the journey to be okay. There are many people here who don't read any book. They don't go to any seminar. They finish in church here and they will even go to the place, their bookshop there and buy something and read. They, are, they can never buy a CD and listing. They have no direction and they have no information. The businessmen, when we're doing business class, they won't attend. When doing marital class, they're married, they won't attend. Nothing matters to them. All they do is rearrange their prejudices and stay without learning anything new. I want to tell you this. The level of your learning is the level of your growing. As long as book is far from you, destiny is far from you. Prayer cannot replace information. Am I talking to somebody here? There are some of you, the last book you read was the last day you left school. Everything you read from that day till now is on Instagram and TikTok. That's all. You can't believe it that a whole woman here for a whole week, all information he got from somebody dancing with dog. All kinds of you are not hearing. Father, wherever that person is, as I put my hand now, let the hand go to the person's head. Yeah. Let there be media casting out of in talk, TikTok demon. Yeah. What, you, what you see in church? And they wonder why nothing is working. Sit down and study. Get information. Business, not the work for the lazy. who came into pastoral ministry with a cake mindset they have dropped out since I didn't say they stopped pastoring they don't drop out while pastoring after some years life abandons them they start telling stories of witchcraft you didn't hear me listen to me what you don't know is bigger than you and life is progressive what you used to fight today's battle may not be what would be fought, you used to fight tomorrow's battle. If you don't keep upgrading, they will leave you behind. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. <laughs> Many of you here that grew up with a background with your parents and you saw the marriage of your parents and since that time you don't read any book, you think you know how marriage works. Kai, but those of you that are marrying Gen Z, I bow my knees to the Lord and I pray for you. Any one of you about to marry in this generation, the Lord help you. We escaped before this thing came. No, you are not hearing. These things you are seeing on the road, that's the thing you are going to marry. Whether male or female, all of these things. Jesus. If we were, if I was about to marry in this generation now, I would be on 70 day fasting. 
Jehovah, blind my eye to the wrong one. <laughs> Jehovah, take anybody's thought in my mind. Who will not be your own. All these people I'm seeing, I don't know them all. <laughs> this generation, then crazy. So I have seven personalities inside the one. You think I'm joking? I'm not joking. So the parents say, I think they know their children. You know, you don't know them at all. You have no information at all. Just sit down here with your, your son and say, okay, show me personality one. Is there, is there a second one? Is there, that is, there's another one. By the time you get to 10, you wise up. I'm not joking. Brothers and sisters, you have to grow up. You have to learn. In the workplace now, you have to learn. Many of you that are thinking about traveling abroad. <laughs> you better learn before you go. The marriage you see here and the marriage you see there. Are not the same. If you're told that you have a strong home, travel. Landlord, travel and see. I declare over you today. May you receive critical counsel. The fourth thing about men that win. Men that don't stay down. Men that pursue and overtake and recover all. Is they build strategic alliances. David needed the Egyptian. So he connected to him. Foolish people will tell you, my uncle is an occult man. So I don't talk to him. Your boss is also an occult man in the office. Why didn't you resign? The political godfather is an occult man. Why are you in politics? Stop being foolish. If you see any man that you need something in his life, humble yourself and get close. You don't have to do the evil they're doing. You need to gain the advantage in them. Am I talking to somebody here today? Build critical alliances. And then life rises. There are men that are the ladders you need. There are men that are the vehicles you need. Am I talking to you? So I don't talk to him. He's an awkward man. Don't talk to him. He's trying to take our destiny in this family. They can't take your destiny You're under my covering. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Know who you need and bring them into your circle. And then finally, the people that win are those who fight for a cause. They don't just fight battles. They fight battles for a cause. David wasn't fighting just because he needed a win. He was fighting for his wife, for his children, for his sons, for his daughters, brothers and sisters. When there's something you are fighting for, you fight like crazy. No, you're not hearing me. Is anybody hearing me here? When you are fighting with a cause, you fight like crazy. You know why I can't be poor? When I look at my children and I look at their faces, I can't be poor. No. When I was getting married and I looked at the face of that young girl that followed me, in that one room by squatter, left a man that bought a Santana to give her and decided to follow me in that one room. Nah. I can't be poor. Anything it will take in righteousness, I will do. As long as it's not sin, I can't be poor. I can't put this girl in shame. I can't, be poor. I can't have these children here begging. I can't be poor. There's something I'm fine. Am I talking to somebody here? Something I'm fine. Are you, are you still hearing my voice? What are you fighting for? Look at your father's house. You know what you're fighting for. You can't come to Portacot and have three girlfriends. With your father's house. 
grass is feeding everywhere nobody in your father's house has gone anywhere before if they kill all your brothers they can't get one million and you get girlfriend your mumu wear cap am I talking to someone how how when you see a girl pass you say I turn the fire girls and the moon what <laughs> am I talking to somebody what when men fight for a cause they fight brutally they know there's something I'm fighting for I'm not worker pass there's a destiny I'm fighting for others can be misbehaving you know some of you came from homes where you knew your only help was education when you went to class others are skipping class you never skip class you read and read you put leg in water and begin to read for the exam because you know I must pass this exam your friend that you are writing jam with can fail jam the father fly him to Germany you fail jam you stay here and write again you, you don't have an option so passing is not an option am I talking to somebody here? what are you fighting for decide that your destiny counts decide that there is something to fight for look at your father's house go back now walk around your whole compound look everywhere and tell yourself I'm fighting for this house a name must come out of this house this darkness must end in this generation somebody must come out of here and I'm beginning the journey that's how men succeed you don't succeed by chance you don't succeed by saying amen in church you succeed by desperate determination you tell yourself whatever it will cost this yoke will break one day men will look at me and say he made it David said no there's something to fight for if it was goat he took I will not bother if it's money they took I will not bother if it's chariots they took I will not bother if it's our horses they took out my wife my children no we are going if we die we die we are going am I talking to somebody here too you will win this battle you will win this battle I say you will win this battle how can God call me and I fail no what are you fighting for decide what you are fighting for you will win I can't I say you will win I say, I say you will win do you know what Nehemiah did look at Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14 the new living translation he said then as I looked over the situation I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them don't be afraid of the enemy remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers your sons your daughters your wives and for your hopes he said remember God and fight somebody said I will fight shout it louder I will fight let me hear you the last time I will fight please as you enter this week know you are fighting and calm down discipline doesn't take preaching discipline takes understanding there's something I'm fighting for the way you spend money because there's something I'm fighting for. There's something I'm fighting for. If, is anybody hearing me? The way you live your life, there's something I'm fighting for. I can't be living like this. No. Destiny will not pass me by. There are some people sitting down here and they cannot talk about an improvement in three years. They can't look into their life and say, okay, this is the achievement of last year. The achievement of two years ago. The achievement of two years ago. You just keep hanging around. Are you okay? And a few days time we say happy new year, say happy new year. What did happen for the old one? He said, Why did I come for third service? I should have just stayed in second service. He said, Why I preach in third service? I'm a member of third service. So I'm talking to you now. I didn't talk like this other services. I just bless them. Power. They go. New. I'm talking to you. Because you know you must win. Lift your hand and say, I am winning. I am winning. Shout it louder, I am, I am winning. But you know why Amalek lost? If I just talk about David and don't talk about Amalek, you won't understand. You know why Amalek lost? The first thing is arrival mentality. They just won a battle and began to celebrate. 
brothers and sisters, the greatest time Satan gives a man an upper court is when you have a rival mentality. Yours is the contract now. Made five million. Bought one to Kumboka and suddenly you have arrived. Just finished building a three bedroom house. Now you have arrived. You are talking like a big man. Every year you are, you are holding khaki like this. You are not hearing me. Arrival mentality is the greatest destroyer of young people's destiny. I think that anyway. The first one million that entered your hands, now you want to fly business class. From Lagos to Abuja. Abuja to Portacon. Business class. As if the person in business class will arrive earlier than the man in the corner. I don't know what's wrong with Nigerians. Sister, brother, don't arrive too early. When you arrive too early, you arrive too small. Am I talking to somebody here? Keep moving! You never finish building a house in village. Now you are chief. Hi, chief. When we greet you now, he said, don't talk to me like that. I am high chief Opoko. On the fire set. How? Are we still in this building? <laughs> Second thing that cost Amalek is mistreatment of helpers. Never mistreat those who help you. Don't mistreat your helpers. He mistreated the young Egyptian that helped him. And that young Egyptian became his downfall. The third thing that destroyed Amalek is lack of vigilance. Brothers and sisters, enemy will always come for a counter attack. Stay vigilant. Somebody say vigilant. vigilant. Say vigilant. vigilant. Always stay vigilant. But I know I'm done now, so let me just throw this at you. So when I was talking to you about not losing hope and trusting God for restoration, will it interest you to know that that night that David's camp was destroyed was the same night that Saul was killed. The day of his greatest darkness was the day the throne opened. While they were trying to stone him here, the throne just opened. He wasn't aware. Brothers and sisters, sometimes it's darkest before dawn. Sometimes the place of your biggest pain is about the place of your biggest breakthrough. Don't give up now. You have come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you the race would be easy. Just stand and go through. You will win. Stand to your feet. Did you catch it? Lift your two hands and just honor the king. Andra Bozakata like